time is what keeps the light from reaching us. There is no greater obstacle to God than time. Meister Eckhart, Sermon 67 All things were created out of nothingness, and thus their true origin is the not. Meister Eckhart, Sermon 52 God is not found in the soul by adding anything but by subtracting. Meister Eckhart, Attributed All things are born of being. Being is born of non-being. Lao Tzu, the Tao Te Ching. Meister Eckhart, the 14th century medieval mystic, shattered theological boundaries and beckoned humanity to a transcendent realm, challenging minds to grasp the ungraspable and inviting souls to dance with the divine. Meister Eckhart's extraordinary mysticism is rooted in a profound understanding of the intimate relationship between the human soul and the divine. Eckhart's teachings deeply challenged the spiritual understanding of the time. He pointed to a God beyond conceptualization, a God with which one could have a direct, unmediated communion. Eckhart's exploration of the ground of the soul reveals the very essence of human existence. His spiritual concepts of the relationship between the Godhead and God still have the capacity to awaken one spiritually and to radically change one's understanding of the divine. Meister Eckhart's insights have not only inspired innumerable spiritual seekers, but also informed and inspired many of the deepest thinkers of Western philosophy, such as Martin Heidegger. Today, Eckhart continues to invite contemplation and dialogue at the intersection of profound spirituality and radical intellectual inquiry. Born in 1260, Eckhart's life unfolded in an era marked by intellectual ferment, religious fervor, and political upheaval. Eckhart entered the Dominican order at an early age and began to pursue spiritual knowledge within the confines of a monastic setting. Dominican friars are well known for their commitment to scholarship, and they provided Eckhart with a platform to immerse himself in Christian theological thought. However, as Eckhart's intellectual pursuits unfolded, so did his mystical inclinations. Eckhart began to deeply inquire into profound theological concepts, particularly the relationship of one's soul to God. Eckhart became increasingly convinced that if one was to experience the divine, it could only happen presently, that is, in the present moment. Thus, Eckhart began to see the concept of time itself as one of the greatest barriers to the experience of God. He also began to intuit and understand a radical difference between God and the Godhead. This concept has the capacity to utterly revolutionize our spiritual understanding. Another theological concept which would become important throughout Meister Eckhart's life was detachment. For Eckhart, detachment was not a mere renunciation of the material world, but a dynamic process of inner liberation a letting go of all attachments that hindered the soul's union with the divine. We will explore Eckhart's concept of the Godhead and the importance of detachment and Gelassenheit in more detail further in this video. Meister Eckhart's revolutionary spiritual teachings were not popular with the church authorities of the time. Accusations were brought against Eckhart, and he found himself accused by the Inquisition. The Inquisition was a powerful arm of the medieval church, which identified supposed cases of heresy. The Inquisition would become an increasingly formidable and dangerous presence for the rest of Eckhart's life. However, ignoring the threats to his life, Eckhart continued to teach the radical spiritual truths that had been revealed to him. At the end of this video, we will offer a guided meditation based on the teachings of Meister Eckhart. The concept of being and non-being that is something and nothing, has long played a fundamental role in Christian thought and philosophy. St. Augustine, 354 to 430, was an early figure laying the Christian foundations for understanding of the nature of being. He drew on the philosophy of the ancient Greeks, particularly Aristotle, to argue that absolute non-being was an impossibility. According to Aristotle, all that was possible was only lesser degrees of absolute being. Augustine utilized this argument to posit that God was in essence this absolute and ultimate being. He also drew upon the concept of platonic form. Platonic idealism or platonic forms was the idea that there must exist an ideal form 
for all existing objects, qualities, and ideas. This included qualities and ideas such as goodness and beauty. According to Plato, for us to be able to measure any degree of goodness or beauty, there must exist somewhere goodness or beauty's ideal form by which we can measure that degree. Augustine took Plato's philosophy of ideal forms and applied it to a Christian context. Thus, God was the absolute ideal form. God became the ultimate, eternal, and uncreated being, the source and measure of all existence. In contrast, the created world is not quite absolute being. Rather, it is an expression of a type of non-being, utterly contingent and dependent upon the sustaining power of God's absolute being. By doing this, Augustine resolved centuries of argument around being and non-being and their relation to understanding the nature of God. He laid the foundations for the Christian doctrine of God as the expression of ultimate pure being and the impossibility of non-being apart from God's being to become the accepted theological doctrine in the Catholic Church right up to the present day. Almost 1,000 years later, Meister Eckhart would completely and totally refute this. He would turn Christian theological doctrine upside down. He saw God as entirely transcendent, utterly unexplainable by any term whatsoever. That is, God is an ineffable reality that can never be grasped by humans. Eckhart believed that it is impossible for humans to say what God is. Even to say that God is absolute being, we cannot even limit God to being. He pointed to the inherent limitations of human language in describing the ultimate nature of God. No word or understanding could ever capture the boundless nature of the divine. We can never ever say what God is. We can only ever say what God is not. This approach is called apophatic theology or negative theology. This is a mystical approach that posits that we can only approach the divine by negating human concepts and language. We come to accept that God's nature will always surpass human comprehension. This is at the core of Eckhart's teaching. Thus, in Eckhart's negative theology, silence is a sacred language. For it is only in silence that we strip away the linguistic and conceptual limitations to our understanding of God and unveil the truth of God beyond God. The Transcendence of Being Eckhart assumes God's transcendence as a reality that surpasses human understanding. His sacred language of silence, a silence that is both outward and inward, an inherent removal of all conceptual limitations, invites us to contemplate this God beyond God. Central to Eckhart's contemplation of a God beyond God is his audacious concept of the Godhead as pure nothingness. This divine nothingness is not a declaration that the Godhead is an absence or a lack. Rather, it points to the Godhead as pure potentiality. A brief example may help us to understand what Eckhart was pointing to. Silence is an example of pure potentiality. Out of silence, any sound can arise. Anything from the sound of a car crash to a Mozart opera. Any sound. Silence is thus both formless and of infinite potential. Silence in its infinite potential could also be said to be without a limit to its fullness. That is, there is no limit on the amount of sound it can allow. Eckhart pointed to the Godhead as this same pure potentiality, the pure potentiality of absolute non-being. According to Eckhart, the Godhead is absolutely silent, not the silence of sound and silence. Rather, a silence deeper than all silence, an eternal, and infinite silence. There is absolutely no movement in the Godhead. Not a stillness in relation to movement, but a stillness beyond stillness, an eternal and infinite stillness. There is no light in the Godhead. This is not the darkness of light and darkness. This is a darkness beyond all darkness. This is an eternal and infinite darkness. The Godhead is utterly simple. This is not the simplicity of the simple and complex. This is a simplicity beyond all simplicity. This is eternal and infinite simplicity of absolute non-distinction. There are absolutely no intentions in the Godhead. Thus, there is no divine will in the Godhead. Nothing is willed. This is absolute freedom, a freedom that is prior to the freedom of the will. 
an eternal and infinite freedom, a freedom from intention that is the Godhead. The Godhead is empty, empty of distinction, empty of intention, empty of light, empty of will, empty of anything one could say of it at all, except in the paradoxical language that Meister Eckhart uses, the language of negative theology, the language of saying only what the Godhead is not. What Eckhart did say about the Godhead was this, the Godhead is a pure, unmanifested potentiality that precedes all creation. The Godhead is the boundless source from which all of existence emanates. What Eckhart would say next would be the reason that church fathers accused him of heresy. The Godhead is the source of God. This is not a completely unknown concept. We see it in the ancient Vedic teachings of India in their distinction between Brahman, God, and Parabrahman, God beyond God. We see it in the teachings of the great 20th century Indian sage, Nisargadatta Maharaj, when he suggests that we realize Parabrahman by meditating on the sense I am until you realize that I am is illusory. Nisargadatta teaches that we realize God or Brahman by meditating on the sense of existing or I am. However, our ultimate destination is the God beyond God, that is, Parabrahman, the source of God. To do this, we must penetrate the illusion of existence itself. We must recognize the sense of existing as utterly illusory. We must realize the God beyond God, the source of the sense of existence, that is, non-existence, nothingness, or non-being. Another famous and well-regarded 20th century Indian sage also pointed to this source of existence, the God beyond God. Ramana Maharshi. Ramana said that his truest teaching was silence. Ramana also said that anything outside of deep dreamless sleep, sushupti, is illusory, anything, at all. Eckhart's teaching that the Godhead, or nothingness, is the source of God, or being, turned almost 1,000 years of Christian theology on its head. It directly contradicted Augustine's claim for the primacy of being, for God as ultimate, pure being. His seemingly outrageous claim was that the Godhead, or nothingness, gives birth to God, or being. But how could Eckhart be so sure? After all, he was risking his very life by teaching what was considered an extreme blasphemy at the time. He understood that these truths were realized in direct experience by his practice of contemplative prayer, the type of prayer today we might call meditation. Contemplative prayer is not a series of formulaic words, but a dynamic and transformative engagement with the divine. It is prayer that transcends words, thoughts, and images. It is prayer that is a direct communion with God beyond the limitations of the intellect. It is interesting to note here that Eckhart's contemplative prayer is in communion with God, not the Godhead. This makes an intriguing parallel to Nisargadatta's instruction to first meditate on the sense of I am, Brahman or God, as the gateway to what is beyond, para-Brahman. Eckhart introduces a notion of unknowing in contemplative prayer, an intentional surrendering of the intellect's need to grasp and define the divine. Again, what is left to us in this state of unknowing but the naked sense of existing, or I amness, in this state of unknowing, the contemplative enters into a receptive silence, allowing the divine presence to unfold in the depths of the soul. Contemplative prayer is also the sacred space in which Gelassenheit is actualized. Gelassenheit is a concept that is put to much philosophical use by the German philosopher Martin Heidegger and later by the French philosopher Jacques Derrida. Gelassenheit embodies the idea of surrendering and relinquishing the personal ego. Heidegger would call this letting be, which allowed for a wholly different type of thinking, different than utilitarian or technological thinking, a thinking that allowed beings as subjects of thought to simply be in their beingness. Similarly, Derrida's deconstruction is in essence the undoing and letting go of binary thinking so as to open up a space of receptivity for new ways and forms of knowing. Both Heidegger and Derrida draw heavily on Eckhart's concept of Gelassenheit. Meister Eckhart pointed to Gelassenheit 
as the act of letting go of desires, attachments, and self-centered preoccupations so as to create space for God's transformative presence. Gelassenheit is not a passive resignation, but an active receptivity. Gelassenheit was not the mere renunciation of external possessions. Rather, it is a profound inner disposition, a state of openness where one releases their grip on temporal concerns and surrenders to the eternal. The surrender of the ego is a pivotal aspect of Gelassenheit. Eckhart does not suggest the eradication of the ego. Instead, the ego, when surrendered through Gelassenheit, transcends individual identity to merge with the infinite. This very much aligns with spiritual teachings East and West that teach that we do not so much as eradicate illusions as liberate them. That is, that the illusory nature of self and world are not destroyed, but rather are recognized as unnecessary, unserious, and utterly without purpose, and thus full of play, fun, and humor. In other words, our illusions are recognized as the humorous play, a God which finds its source in the pure non-necessity of nothingness. Find a quiet corner where the world falls away and you can turn inward without disturbance. Sit in a position that is both alert and relaxed and gently close your eyes. Begin to draw your attention to the breath. Inhale deeply, inviting calmness into your being. Exhale slowly, releasing any form of inner turbulence or tension. Let your breath find its natural rhythm, becoming an anchor in the present moment. You are preparing to explore a realm of profound stillness and expansive silence. Focus on the concept of being, the sense of I am that you identify with, your personal narrative, your body, your thoughts and feelings. Recognize them, then gently set them aside, one by one. As you detach from each layer, envision yourself approaching a deeper, more universal truth. Imagine an all-encompassing nothingness, not a vacuum or void, but an infinite presence that is the foundation of all existence. This nothingness is brimming with potential, the absolute ground from which all things emerge and to which they return. As you breathe in, imagine this nothingness as an ocean without shores, limitless and profound. As you breathe out, feel your individuality blending into this vast expanse. In this expanse, personal boundaries dissolve, and the very source of it all is revealed as an limitless absence, a boundless openness of pure potential. In this openness, all that defines you begins to disappear. Your labels, your history, your ambitions, your fears. There are no thoughts, no judgments, no expectations, only an unfathomable vastness. Let go, let go, let go, until you reach the deepest, until you let go of even the subtle sense of I am. Release this last attachment to the feeling sense of existing. Go beyond the primary illusion, I am. Rest in the nothingness that is the source prior to the arising of the feeling sense, I am. Rest in this profound freedom beyond any possible intention. Rest in this pure simplicity beyond any possible distinction. Rest where nothingness and the potential for everything coexist without contradiction. There is no striving here, no need to attain anything. This absolute non-being is not an endpoint, but the very ground of all possibility for any arising of existence. This is the blank canvas before the first stroke of the brush. This is the empty page before the first word. This is the pure potentiality that is always present regardless of whether anything appears or not. This is the unmanifested essence, the foundational nothingness from which all arises and into which all returns. Recognize that this is not a denial of the world, but the most profound affirmation of life's source. The infinite diversity of forms and experiences are all non-necessary and thus playful, expressions of the infinite potential of nothingness. Each moment, is a utterly unique and non-necessary manifestation of the boundless. Now, begin to slowly return to the sensory world. Feel the ebb and flow of your breath.
as you open your eyes, maintain the serenity and expansiveness that you now know to be the source of you. Carry the deep serenity of nothingness throughout your day. Recall that beneath the dynamic dance of forms, absolute non-being is ever-present. Nothingness is the source of everything. Thus, be relieved of everything. Absolutely nothing matters, because it is all merely nothing mattering. In this recognition, you will find a deep and enduring peace and a boundless freedom. But perhaps most surprisingly, an unconditional, thus profoundly free, love for all and everything that exists. Let your best ever.